everyone and welcome to today's video that is going to be teaching you how to wash raw wool. This fleece we're going to be working with in this video is a bit over a pound of a Romney cross wool. And before you start to wash your wool, you're going to want to make sure you take your fleece and you skirt it really well. Shake out as much dust, poop, hay bits, vegetable matter everything. You're going to want to make sure this is spotless or near spotless so then it makes the washing process a lot easier and faster. This wool actually ended up being gorgeous once I carded it. You can actually find some of it on our Etsy shop at the main wool stead. It works amazing in needle felting. I would not recommend it for roving only because this fleece is actually a couple years old. I just never got to process it until now. Alright, now we're going to start. You're going to want to take your water and run it before putting it in your tote. You're going to want this as hot as possible. I actually turned up my water heater up to 140 degrees and it really, really made a difference. The hot water just melts that lanolin right off the wool. And you can use any tote or five gallon bucket that you have available. I would not recommend washing it in your sink because the lanolin over time can ruin your pipe, septic system, that stuff. So just fill a tote and then you can dump the dirty water outside. And now once you have enough, that's a couple inches, you're gonna add Dawn dish soap, that's an option. And the key is here is don't swish it around too much. You don't want any suds to get in your wool. That is really, really important to know. So a little bit of swishing, see how there's just a few bubbles, but it's not sudsy. That's what you want. All right, now we're just going to add in wool a handful at a time. And you're going to want to make sure you don't agitate it too much. But at first, when I started processing wool, I was terrified of moving it too much as I heard in all other videos or posts that I've read online that, you know, moving it too much is going to felt it, it's going to ruin it. I can say after all of the wool I've washed, and I've washed a lot over the fall and winter, I've never had a anything felt, even a fine Shetland fleece. Nothing has felted no matter how much I've moved it. So don't be afraid to move it a little bit, but don't constantly sit there and play with it the entire time. So this I'm just pressing it down, making sure everything is covered and soaked very well. And just keep pushing it in. You can see how nasty the water's already turning. This fleece was disgusting. And now you're gonna set a timer for 45 minutes. All right, the 45 minutes is up. You're going to take the wool out chunk by chunk, give it a good squeeze, make sure you get all that nasty water out and set it aside in another bin. Just keep wringing it. Do not be afraid to squeeze it and get all that water out. You're not gonna hurt the wool. Just amazes me how much gunk comes out of that from the first wash. And because this is a colored fleece, I'm not too worried about making it the best color. Like, I don't have to worry about it being pristine white because it is a brown and blonde fleece. If it was a white fleece, I would be using, I think it's called unicorn powder or skirt or something like that. I'll put the link in the below what the name is that makes white raw wool gorgeous it turned our little Elsie our mini Chevette Gotland cross who looks disgusting right now in the winter contrasted with the white snow it makes her fleece from yellow to bright white you can actually purchase Elsie's wool in roving uh, no sorry core wool we have we process hers into core wool because she wasn't the cleanest sheep she got a lot of sticks and hay bits in there so sadly hers can't be used for roving for needle felting but it makes perfect core wool so shameless plug there and we're going to keep 
just getting all this water out, wringing it out. This is it, waiting for the second wash. It's already looking pretty clean. In another video, I will show you the carding process and what it turned out to look like. But now we're ready for round two. Fill up your bucket again, or tote, as much as you did last time. Add in another squirt of Dawn dish soap, swish it around, don't get too much suds, and just plop all that wool back in there. You can wash an entire fleece if you want to and have the space to. I just prefer to wash small batches, no more than two pounds, because I find that it actually cleans it a lot more thoroughly. And here I used a wooden skewer to press it down because the water was just too hot to touch. All right, and I also did a third wash with just plain hot water, and then it was good to go. And now we're gonna take what we just washed onto our drying rack. You should really wash your wool two or three times, three to four if it's like really disgusting. Your last wash should always be just plain hot water because you want to get the residue from the Dawn or whatever you use out of the final wash. And this is actually a sweater drying rack that I purchased off Amazon. It's like four or five layers. This is the best purchase I've made since getting into processing wool. You just lay it on a thin layer. It takes about 24 hours to dry if I lay it out thinly. Usually I'll leave it for a day on one side and then I'll flip it over and rearrange it so both sides get very dry before I start carding it. At this stage you can also wet pick, which wet picking is if you see any bits in there that didn't come out during the wash, little pricky hay or you know just anything you missed. You can just pick it out. It's actually way easier to wet pick than dry pick when you're skirting. And if you don't have a drying rack, um, you can just lay it out maybe on some newspaper and then just keep fiddling around and moving it every couple hours so all the spots get dry. But this was only like a $40 investment and when I'm processing a ton of wool, it's a really good deal for me. And that's it guys. You just watched me process a whole pound of raw wool and I hope you feel confident enough to tackle this yourself. Please consider giving this video a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel where we'll have a lot of new videos coming out with either needle felting tutorials, beekeeping videos, and just all around farm stuff. Until next time guys, have a good one.